I'd like to talk about three things, the personal aspect, the person, and the preacher. Robert Taylor, or granddaddy, as he's known around my house, and grandmama, Irene, of course, are always welcome guests at our house. Now, those boys of mine think granddaddy can do no wrong, and they think grandmama is a wonderful cookie maker. And you know about Irene, don't you? I told you I get you. <laughs> she likes to sleep late. She used to have a little thing on the wall that said, if God had meant for me to sun see the sunrise, he'd have made it later in the day. <laughs> but I've really figured out what it amounts to is she figures as early as Robert gets up, he'll just tell her about it. <laughs> Someone asked me about what this is on her neck. She'll tell you it's a TENS unit. She's been having headaches, and this helps help uh, suppress the pain. But I saw her pull a battery pack out a while ago, and I think it had energizers in it, and that explains how she can just keep going and going. <laughs> Their son, Tim, of course, teaches at Nashville, in Nashville at Lipscomb High School and coaches there. Tim's words of wisdom to his daddy were this, Daddy, you could save a lot on printing costs if you quit all that alliteration. You know, his bevies of books and these mountains of manuscripts really get after it for a while. And by the way, all you younger preachers, it's a real good way to get a good library if you marry into a preacher's family. I believe every, man, every lectureship he goes to and every book he writes, I get a copy. So just keep that in mind. You can build your library pretty easy. The person, Robert Taylor, I've come to know, didn't know him all that well before Rebecca and I married. I knew that, or she's told me at least, that it must have been that I've made a fairly good impression on him because the first time he met me I had a beard. And there aren't any beards in the Taylor family. And he still let me marry his daughter. So, <laughs> but he's a generous person. A kind person, a considerate person. One who was even-tempered and supportive of us when we have needed that support. And though he is quiet in many ways, he's not silent about important things. And I can always count on when I need counsel or I need someone to go to that the tailors are there for us. As a preacher, you all probably know at least as much about him as I. He's true to the word, to the book. He's true to the Lord, to the truth. He's true to the church, all of those really being about one and the same when it comes right down to the bottom. And so I'm grateful to have him as a father-in-law, her as a mother-in-law, and I'm grateful to have them as brethren in Christ. I appreciate very much, Phil, your inclusion of Irene, because really, this is an honor not only to Robert, but also to Irene, because the two are one. And we think of you in those terms. And I don't know what the... Uh, gospel preachers would do without faithful wives to support them and to stand behind them. I think I'd have thrown in the proverbial towel a long time ago if it hadn't been for Fran. But uh, Irene and Robert go together and we're thankful for that. Now another individual that's very close to the family who uh, holds Robert in such high esteem as we all do is Brother B.J. Clark. Brother Clark spoke to us this morning one of the truly great lectures of this lectureship. All of the lectures have been wonderful, but his certainly stands out as one of the very best. And Brother Clark preaches for the Lord's Church in South Haven, Mississippi, just south of Memphis, and has had occasion through the years to hear Brother Taylor on numerous occasions and uh, to become acquainted with him through his writings as well as in a personal way. And so at this time, Brother B.J. Clark is free to come and say whatever he might have on his heart. I remember very vividly as a young boy, my father coming back from lectureships and telling me about preachers and sermons that he had heard. And as a young boy, my father began introducing me to literature written by brethren. And as a little boy, I'm talking 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, I used to read material by Robert R. Taylor, Jr. 
And I was always so impressed by the biblical knowledge that he possessed and the way in which he wrote. And then I got older and I went to college and I became a gospel preacher. And then when I moved to the Memphis area, occasions started to result where I would be speaking at the same lectureship where Brother Taylor was. And one thing I must confess, and I've never told him this, is that I was very intimidated to be around him because I'd known him for so long through his writings and had such great awe and respect for him that uh, I found myself wanting to, uh, I, I, you know, it's really... I stick my foot in my mouth around him, not want to stick my foot in my mouth around him. But I told my wife one day after being around him, I said, you know what? He treats me like a friend. I said, I, I, he treats me like a friend and like we've been friends for a long time. And I was just so impressed by his approachability. Though he is a man who is well known, he doesn't act like it. Though he is a man who is well loved, he certainly knows how to love as well, he and his wife both. And so I'm grateful that I could not only grow up and meet him to continue to listen to him preach, but I'm grateful that I could also become his friend and feel like I'm one of his dear friends. He is certainly one of ours. I think when the history of the Lord's Church is written about this day and time, that Brother Robert R. Taylor Jr.'s name will be very prominent in that mix. I believe that people will look back in time to come if the Lord lingers and they will start writing about those who shaped and influenced this era. And I'm confident that Robert R. Taylor Jr. is going to be very prominently mentioned in the history of this era of the Lord's Church. I don't think that's an exaggeration at all. Let me just briefly say this. I, when last night I retired, I started thinking about what makes a good preacher. And immediately, of course, my mind riveted to First and Second Timothy and Titus, where Paul wrote to preachers. And I started thinking about how appropriate that was to describe Brother Taylor. Because just as Paul exhorted Timothy to teach no other doctrine, Brother Taylor is always taught the doctrine of Christ and nothing but that. Just as the Apostle Paul exhorted Timothy to continue to be a, a good minister and to put the brethren in remembrance of these things and to nourish them in the words of faith and of good doctrine and to refuse profane and old wives' fables and to exercise himself unto godliness and to give attendance to reading, I thought that's exactly descriptive of Brother Robert R. Taylor Jr. That's exactly what he's done with his life. In verse 11, these things command and teach He's not only learned them for himself, but he's also then taught them and communicated those principles to others. He has taken, he's taken heed unto himself and unto the doctrine, and by doing so, he has saved both himself and those who have heard him. And how thankful I am that he has studied to show himself approved unto God. He's given diligence to make sure that he can handle aright the word of truth and I don't know of anybody that is able to surpass him in their ability to handle aright the word of truth. And he has, just like Paul, preached the word in season, out of season. He's reproved when it's necessary. He's rebuked. He's encouraged with long suffering and doctrine. And he has continued to fight a good fight and keep the faith. And I believe that he will finish his course. I hope that's still a long course. I hope he has many years yet to live for the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can continue to bless me. And you know what I want to do? My little boy now is almost nine years old. I want to introduce him to some literature written by our brethren. And I'm going to give him some things written by Robert R. Taylor Jr. And hope that as he grows up, he can too become his friend. Thank you, Brother Taylor and Irene, for how much you mean to me and to this great brotherhood. We love you dearly. I think all of us could say amen to what Phil and BJ have already spoken, and we do appreciate these two brethren uh, uh, speaking in behalf of Brother Robert Taylor. You know, nature sometimes plays a role in our lives, just like the snow and ice has played a role in a uh, lesser uh, gathering for this lectureship, unfortunately so, because I was hoping we'd have this building completely filled today. The Mississippi River divides the east from the west in the United States, 
And therefore, those of us who preach on the west side of the Mississippi River have not been able to be as well acquainted with those brethren over on the east side of the Mississippi as we would like. But one thing about it, these lectureships that we're having throughout the Brotherhood is helping to alleviate that problem because we are becoming acquainted. And that's the way I became acquainted with Brother Robert Taylor. Uh, I haven't known him all these many years as I have some of the rest of you, but I have known about him and I've read his writings for a long, long time. But I first started getting acquainted with him when... Uh, I would hear him on lectureships and be on some of the same lectureships with him. And from the very start, I, I thought to myself, this man is a quality individual. This man has something to say. This man has studied the scriptures. He knows what God's will is, and he has the courage to enunciate it without compromise or without favor. And that's the kind of man that I really admire and I really appreciate. So I came to love and appreciate Robert Taylor for the kind of man that he is. And that uh, appreciation has never diminished. It's only been enhanced with the passing of time. And so I feel very strongly about it. I would like to share with you some things that have been said by others. Brother Benny Whitehead, for an example, who was planning to be here today, but I've already told you couldn't make it, when he called this morning, he said, I would like for you to convey some thoughts, though, that are on my heart. And I said, well, that would just be wonderful. I'll jot them down as you tell me what's on your heart. And these are some of the things that he said about you, Robert. He said, first of all, when I think of Robert Taylor, I think of a Christian gentleman. And you know, that's really a compliment right there. I think of a Christian gentleman. And I think all of us could again say amen concerning you. You are a Christian gentleman. Then he said that he is a devout student of the word, just as B.J. has brought out. No question about that. You can't listen to Robert Taylor speak very long until you know that he knows what he's talking about. He knows the book, and you know there's no shortcut to learning. There's only one way to learn it, and that's to get in there and study it, read it, study it, meditate upon it, reflect upon it, delve into it. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate both day and night. All of us know that from Psalm chapter 1. And certainly that depicts you, Robert, a man who loves the law of the Lord, and you've thought about it, you've prayed about it, you've studied it, and that's evident in your life. The third thing that Benny said about him is that he's a faithful gospel preacher. And you know, wouldn't it be wonderful, you, are, you who preach the gospel, when we come to the end of the way, if there's nothing else that could be etched on our gravestone than just three words, wouldn't it be wonderful, faithful, gospel, preacher? I can't think of a greater compliment than that. Three tremendous commendations already, and I'm not quite half finished with this list. Staunch defender of the faith. I think of what Paul wrote in Philippians 1 verse 16, I am set for the defense of the gospel. And certainly Robert Taylor is a man who is set for the defense of the gospel. We've talked about his mild mannerisms, his gentle spirit. Only one time that you'll ever see Robert uh, antagonize and his righteous indignation riled, and that's when the truth is being threatened. And then the very best of Robert Taylor emerges as he comes forth to defend the faith, to contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. We love you for that, Robert. Then it was said of Benny, he has a kind and loving heart. And I can't think of a better compliment than that because I believe that's the essence of Christianity. I know a lot of fellows that know the book, but they don't manifest that kind and loving heart. But when you see a combination of a person who knows the book, like Robert does, who defends the faith, who is faithful in his study and in his presentation of God's truth and yet has that kind and loving spirit, then you really have a wonderful combination. A quiet and meek spirit was something else that Benny said about you. He has a quiet and meek spirit. And I think of the Beatitudes, blessed are the meek. He is a true and genuine friend was the last thing that he said. I think that's the measure of a man, one who is a faithful and loyal friend. 
I'm sure we've all met and known and perhaps had fair weather friends, but there's a lot of difference in a fair weather friend and in a true and faithful friend. And Brother Whitehead feels that Robert Taylor is a true and genuine and faithful friend. That's a great tribute to you, Robert, what Brother Whitehead had to say, and he expressed the sentiments of all of us here today. We got a letter from Brother Jim Laws that he faxed to me when he learned that he could not come. And on the telephone, he said there was much more that he wanted to say, but he tried to keep it brief. He said, I am very sorry that due to the inclement weather, I'm unable to attend this year's Honor to Whom Honor luncheon at Brown Trail, honoring my good and dear friend Robert Taylor. With that being the case, I am sending this note along with two others which express just some of the love, respect, and appreciation which so many of us have for Robert Taylor. Robert has been a close friend of mine as well as the congregation at Get Well. He, along with Irene, have endeared themselves to the congregation here. He now, as Brother Guy in Woods before him, has a standing invitation to speak at Get Well the last Sunday of each year, which Robert has done for a number of years. That shows you the love they have for you. Just make it a standing invitation. We want you to be here the last Sunday night of every year. He is a regular speaker for the Spiritual Sword Lectureship, conducting the open forum sessions for the lectureship. And I take a great deal of satisfaction in knowing that the Brown Trail Church, along with its fine lectureship program, is honoring Robert Taylor this year. Well, we appreciate that communication from Brother Jim Laws. Before Robert moved to Ripley, Tennessee, he preached in Ripley, Mississippi. That's, that's quite an accomplishment within itself. I, I, I didn't even know there were any such towns as that. <laughs> Ripley, Mississippi and Ripley, Tennessee, but Ripley, Mississippi first. And we got a letter from Brother Tom Childers, who is the present preacher there, and I don't know whether he's any kin to Brother James Childers or not. I would conclude that probably he is. Do you know Robert offhand? Uh, somewhat kin to him, don't know for sure how, but Tom Childers is the local preacher there. Brother James Childers has been an elder there for a good long while, evidently. And so Jim or Tom Childers wrote this to Jim, who in turn sent it to me. This lectureship is a hand-me-down, let me tell you for sure, as we're going to learn a little later on. But here is what uh, Tom Childers, the preacher at Ripley, Mississippi, wrote to Jim Laws. I spoke with James Childers, who has been an elder at the Ripley, Mississippi Church of Christ for 43 years, and this is what he said of Robert Taylor, quote, he was very knowledgeable in the Bible, well posted in all matters, and a hard worker while he was at Ripley. He worked well with the elders, and the elders always consider him and Irene to be a valuable as asset to the work here at Ripley. He left Ripley, Mississippi to go to Ripley, Tennessee with the elders' blessings. Then Tom Childers continues, the tailors are still remembered with fondness and when word came of Irene's recent illness, there was prayerful concern by many who knew and remembered the Taylors. He asked, give my regards to the Taylors. I wish I could be present when you honor them this day. So another fitting tribute to both Robert and Irene. And I don't know what the health problem was, was Irene, but we're glad that you're able to be here. That's for sure and certain. Here is a letter written by the elders of the Getwell uh, no, by the Ripley Church uh, in uh, Tennessee, where Robert is presently the preacher, has been for 23 years. So this is from your present elders. We are happy as an eldership and as a congregation that the Fort Worth Lectures has chosen Brother Taylor to be honored. We should give honor where honor is due, and certainly I subscribe to that. Robert has been our minister and servant more than 20 years, and it's like he's always been here. I think we know him quite well. There are few people who you know this long without finding fault, and Robert is one of these. Now that is a tremendous compliment. Not many of us could uh, have that said about us because our faults are usually very evident. But Robert, uh, they said that they couldn't find any in you. 
We have grown spiritually because of his knowledge of God's word. He could choose to write a lot less, but he doesn't. He could choose to preach a lot less, but he doesn't. He could choose to study the Bible a lot less, but he doesn't. He could choose to care for the church less, but he doesn't. And this is the kind of person he is. Isn't that a great commendation? We at the Ripley Church appreciate the years of association with Robert and Irene and their family. We therefore rejoice that one of our own is being honored. I would treasure that letter if I were you. That's a great commendation. Then the next two come from the children of Robert and Irene. And uh, I told Robert yesterday, having read these two letters, I said, Robert, I don't know about your present material state, how much money you may have saved, but I know one thing. I know you're a rich man, and I really mean that. Their son, Tim, wrote this. <clears throat> Robert Taylor is a man who possesses many outstanding characteristics. Now keep in mind, this is their son writing of their father. He is a humble man. He has a great sense of humor. He has a great love for others, and he is committed to the Lord, to the church, and his family. To many, he is known as Brother Taylor. To others, as Robert, and to a few, as Bob. I thank God daily that I know him as Daddy and that my children know him as granddaddy. Solomon wrote, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Proverbs 1, 8 and 9. To me, these verses sum up the way I feel about my parents and the Christian training I have received from them. I hope that my wife and I will be able to have as positive an influence on our children as our parents have had on us. Thanks, Dad, for being a great Christian father. Now this next letter, <laughs> I may have a tough time getting through this. I read it the other day in my office and cried <laughs> because it is a sweet letter. It's written by Rebecca, their daughter, Phil's wife. I'm going to try and be indifferent to what she says here. <clears throat> Others can speak of Robert Taylor as a preacher, a writer, a friend, or one of the many other roles that he fills. Only two people can speak of him as daddy. I count it one of the greatest blessings of my life to be one of them. I thank God daily for giving me both of my wonderful parents. I could fill a book with fond memories. Our parents have always been there for us. Despite the busy schedule of a preacher, Daddy made time for us, time to play, to learn, to talk, to do things together. Most of all, he made time to teach us how to live the Christian life. Daddy used to plan surprise trips for us. We would get in the car and have no idea what adventure was awaiting us. Now I'm getting to watch my own children enjoy Granddaddy's surprise trips for them. Ryan and Jonathan keep Granddaddy and grand Grandmama very busy playing when they get to be together, and they all four love it. Daddy and Mother have always supported us and the things that were important to us. They have driven all over to support us in various activities. Daddy has rearranged his schedule to make special events for Tim and for me. He's even gotten up at 4 a.m. and driven all day after closing a gospel meeting to make it home in time for something that was important to us. He has been a special birth he, he has been a special birthday dinner date for all of us for a long time, and even now Daddy somehow arranges time to travel several hours so that he and mother can help celebrate their grandchildren's birthdays. That's the special kind of love that we have always known from our parents. As children, one of our favorite things to do after our family devotionals was to try to stump Daddy with New Testament verses. Tim and I would choose a verse and give him the reference and see if he could quote it. He could. We would read a verse and see if he could give us the reference to quote the verse before and after it. He could. 
I can count on one hand and have fingers left the number of times that we even came close to stumping him. Daddy and Mother have taught us in word and in deed so many valuable lessons. They are such a team in every aspect of their lives that it is hard to talk about one of them without mentioning the other. In them we see a deep love and commitment to the Lord and to his church, to each other, to their family, and to the many people whose lives they've touched. They show us what it truly means to put God first in life. We see their humble spirit and their willingness to go the second mile and beyond. They taught us to look on the bright side and to laugh whenever possible. They have shown us how to learn a lesson from life's experiences and to let the bad ones make us better, not bitter. I hope Ryan and Jonathan grow up feeling about their parents the way I feel about you. We wish we could be there today to share this time with you. As I told you, we're there in spirit, but we just can't be there. Daddy, you and mother have been and continue to be such a tremendous source of love and strength and inspiration to me. Thank you both for being such wonderful Christian parents. I love you more than words can express. I'm very proud to be your daughter. I'll close with our special verse. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. You're a rich man. Rich man. Robert, would you mind coming up here, please? <clears throat> if you have your little green book open to the second page, you can follow what I'm about to read. This plaque is a dedication to Robert Taylor Jr. And here's what it says. With sincere appreciation for your many years of loyal service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in your preaching of the gospel, in your teaching and in your writing, and in your personal influence for good and right, we thank God for you and your faithful wife, Irene, for what the two of you have meant to the cause that we all love. Well, I am just really and truly overwhelmed with this. In fact, I told Brother Maxie when he first mentioned this to me that this would be a totally new experience for me. And I am so very grateful to him and the elders here and the fine school of preaching here, as well as the comments that have been made orally and the written comments that have been made. I just really appreciate them so very, very much. I'm glad that mention has been made about my beloved. We've been together for a long, long time, and I appreciate her so very, very much. In fact, I have the same attitude toward her that I heard Brother Foy Wallace Jr. express uh, some years ago. He said, whatever people do for me is too much. Whatever they do for my wife is too little. And I appreciated that in Brother Wallace, and I have tried to have that same kind of attitude toward my beloved wife. She's been a sweet wife, but she's also just as witty as she can be, and that has helped us along the pathway of life. Mention was made of our two grandsons in Alabama. Jonathan is our, the little wit in our family, and he recently asked his grandmama, he said, Grandmama, how old are you? And when Irene told him, he said, Man! You're older than my mommy. <laughs> Another little favorite story about Irene. Somebody, the two of us were on a lectureship sometime back, and one of the members of, of the School of Preaching went up to her and said, Irene, how does it feel to be married to a Bible scholar? She said, I would not know. You'll have to ask Robert about that. <laughs> But I appreciate her, and I appreciate you, and thank you most kindly for this. This has been a great day for us, one that will be a part of our book of memories for years to come. And again, my thanks. I love to tell the story. This to me is a great song of exhortation to each of us. May we never grow tired of hearing the old, old story.
May we never grow tired of telling others of the saving grace of God through Christ. I love to tell the story of fun seen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all the golden dreams. I love to tell the story it did so much for me and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Sing hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing a new, new song, will be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, Twill be my theme in glory, To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love. Our deep appreciation, Brother Larry Harp, for being such an excellent song leader and singing these songs in such a splendid way. In addition to the honor that we bestowed upon Brother Robert Taylor, the elders felt that it was appropriate to give special recognition to two individuals that are mentioned here. One of those individuals is Brother Tom Gardner, who is a member of the Brown Trail Congregation. Tom and his lovely wife, Doris, have endeared themselves to us through the years. In fact, it was my privilege to perform the marriage ceremony for Tom and Doris after Ruth had died, Tom's first wife, and they were married right there in the living room of our house. Just the four of us were there, and so we feel a real part of your life, Tom. Tom deserves special recognition because of the fact he has given of himself tirelessly in the taping of lectures all over the Brotherhood and sermons and the vast uh, storehouse of uh, great presentations that have been preserved for us on audio tape and on videotape. Uh, we owe him a great debt of thanks. And I'm afraid that we don't get around to saying thank you, Tom, near as often as we should. I know that a lot of us have thanked you from time to time, but we want to give you special recognition. We believe you're deserving of it. We owe you a great debt of gratitude. I would like for you to come up here for just a moment, please. We also prepared a, a plaque for Tom, and this is what it has to say, and it's from all of them. To Tom Gardner, for your many years of faithfulness to Christ, and especially for the countless hours of hard work in making audio and video tapes of gospel sermons and lectures, and duplicating them for widespread use in advancing the cause of our Lord, we express our sincere appreciation to you and to your devoted wife, Doris, 
in Christian Love presented at the 20th Annual Fort Worth Lectureship. I'd like to thank Maxie for the words that he's spoken about me. Also, I want to thank Brown Trail Congregation for the environment that they have set around us to give us such an opportunity to do what little work we've done. It's a real task to stand before you today and not say something that would cause you to think that I'm boasting. Then, of course, it's a real privilege to think back over the things that we've done in the last several years to make one feel very, very good. We have traveled many miles in the last few years. I remember we went from Anniston, Alabama on the east to El Paso on the west, to Kansas City on the north, to Portland, Texas on the Gulf Coast on the south. And people like Brother and Sister Taylor encouraged us so much. And I had so much pleasure of recording those lessons and doing what I could do. One thing that the, these tapes have done to me has made me realize many of the valuable things in life. And one of them is, is godly grandparents and parents. And one of the men that have influenced me, I guess, as much as anyone in the Christian life was the late Jack Meyer Sr. Then after he passed away in the, last, in the late 50s, there was another man that helped me considerably, and that was Brother Thomas Warren. Then not only that, but many people in the church, and I've learned one thing, and I hope elders will learn from it also that there's so much work that we can do. and There's so much money and people to do it if we just have someone to lead the way. I've had many people to help us physically, help us financially, and help us every other way, more than really we thought we appreciated at that time. I want to thank the Brown Trail Church here and every member of them for the environment they have set to do work of that nature. Not only that, uh, I appreciate parents and grandparents and other people that has influenced us. But I have learned to love and appreciate my spouse. You remember Ruth, she helped me for a number of years, and she passed away in 91. And as Maxie has said, Doris joined me in 1992. She's been a big encouragement to me and our work, and I hope it goes on for many more years. And Maxie, I thank you and the elders and everyone involved in this today. You're well-deserving, Tom, and we appreciate you and love you very dearly. How many in this gathering today know Brother Paul H. Epps? Raise your hand if you know him. Well, a goodly number of you do, and some of you don't. We chose to give him special recognition this year, too, because we believe that he deserves it. Now, he's not as widely known as some, but I've never known a man with a more gentle spirit with a more loving attitude than Brother Paul H. Epps. I worked closely with him during three years at Corsicana, Don. You and Mark remember that. And uh, I've known him much longer than that. I first became acquainted with him in about 1943 in Muskogee, Oklahoma, when I was just a little kid. My dad was stationed at Camp Gruber there, and Brother Paul Epps was a new convert, but he was leading singing at the Church of Christ in Muskogee. And I just fell in love with him then. He later 
led the singing for my granddad Goodwin's funeral in Waxahachie, Texas years later. But he's one of those men that's just always out there in his station, busy in the master's service, not trying to make a big splash or notoriety, just faithfully serving the Lord. And I felt that he was deserving of recognition. I made the recommendation to the elders and they agreed fully in the matter. Not only has he been a faithful gospel preacher, but he's also helped tremendously to uh, implant in our brethren's mind the need for good singing in the church. And he has taught singing training schools all over the brotherhood. Brother Epps called me late last night. Uh, he was rather weak. Uh, he's about 82, 83 years of age. He said, Maxie, the weather's just so bad that we're afraid to get out. And I said, Brother Epps, I surely wouldn't want you to get out on slippery highways and maybe have an accident. And as much as we'd love for you to be there, we surely understand. I want you to know that this plaque will be sent to Brother Epps. Here's what we said to him. For your many years as a faithful servant of Jesus Christ in preaching the gospel and in making significant contribution to the Lord's church in emphasizing the importance of good singing and worship to God and for your humble and sweet spirit. We sincerely acknowledge your achievements and express sincere appreciation to you and your faithful wife, Joe. He nearly cried when I told him about the plaque that we have for him. So we've done something good there, I hope, in bringing a little cheer and sunshine into his life, I hope in Tom's life, and Robert, in a very special way, we hope in your and Irene's life. Larry, you've done such a great job leading us in singing. I want him now to lead us in one of the songs that Brother Paul Epps wrote. In fact, one of the song leaders chose to sing it just yesterday, and that was not asked of him. He just happened to choose it. And the song is Jesus Knows and Jesus Cares. This was written by Brother Paul H. Epps that we're giving special recognition to. After the singing of this song, Brother A.C. Morris was scheduled to lead us in the closing prayer, but he called us unable to...